Now then, how are you doing? I hope you're well. I love a coastal subject, me, with rugged cliffs and restless seas. Of course, in the UK, we're rather spoilt when it comes to interesting coastlines. One of my all-time favourite coastal destinations is the Mull of Galloway. It always seems to be extremely windy when we go there, but then it is a relatively tiny peninsula situated right on the west coast of Scotland, so shorts and sunglasses rarely get a look in. Well, if you like cliffs and rocks as much as I do, stay tuned. Dumfries St Galloway is one of Scotland's best kept secrets. Tucked away down in its southwest corner, it is truly an area of outstanding natural beauty. Making use of a rare opportunity presented by the Forestry Commission for Scotland's Stay the Night trial scheme for campervan owners, we spent one evening fighting off hordes of midges by clattering Shaw's Lock and another in the heart of Kira Tree Forest. Here we enjoyed a relatively relaxing and not too taxing hike along the Log Hill Trail, noted for its many tumbling burns and extensive dense woodland. I always find such walks a feast for the senses and always come away with lots of fresh ideas for future paintings. The pine forests have a magical air to them, while the secluded Bruntis Lock provides a brief respite from the trees and a chance to fill your lungs with fresh air and admire one of the best forestry environments Scotland has to offer. The highlight of our visit to the area, however, and our prime objective was the Mull of Galloway, the most southerly point in Scotland. It has a lighthouse and a large circular structure with crazy steps up its side known as Kennedy's Cairn, believed to commemorate a local postman who lost his life delivering mail in a snowstorm. I love rummaging around a pebbly beach and the Mull of Galloway has no shortage of them. Every cove is a veritable treasure chest of interesting rocks and textures eroded and sculpted by the patient forces of nature. I could spend hours here navigating the rock pools and imagining what stories the cove could tell. Of smugglers perhaps or pirates
wild, rugged cliff tops abound in this beautifully crinkly landscape, each turn of the coastal path providing the walker with a fresh view out to sea and a spectacular headland for the eyes to feast upon. Just a short way along from the lighthouse is Galley Craig, a notable rocky promontory from which the visitor centre coffee house takes its name. On a clear day you can see Ireland and the Isle of Man, but when the cliffs are this spectacular, who wants to look out to sea? With its steep sides, jagged ridges and chorus of seabirds, this is my kind of subject. When painting rocks, it's always important to bear in mind their three-dimensional properties. For artists working on a two-dimensional surface, this is one of our biggest challenges. With each additional brushstroke, a fresh new surface is created, each of which gradually breaks the shape down into light and dark tones from which hopefully the illusion of a three-dimensional object finally emerges. Care has to be taken to ensure the integrity of the subject is maintained and that the contours make some sort of visual sense. Other than that, the biggest challenge is in keeping it looking natural and that means avoiding falling into the trap of creating any patterns that are so obviously repetitive. Foam patterns on the surface of the sea, created by the constant crashing of surf against the rocks, are also a massive challenge to the watercolour painter. One way to create them is by using white paint of course, or you could protect them with masking fluid. Personally, I've always preferred to paint around them negatively, leaving the foam as white paper. It's a little more fiddly and not terribly precise, but it is spontaneous, which in my book wins hands down every time. Although Galley Craig became the primary object of my artistic intentions, I did also paint a view looking towards the lighthouse. This scene also featured dramatic cliffs and restless broiling seas, but it was the adjacent rolling landscape of the peninsula that challenged me the most. 
the contours are gentle and the variations in the ground are quite subtle. And odd as it may seem, it's often the subtle things that give the watercolour painter the most grief. As the land gradually erodes, the surface of the earth shimmers and shivers, bearing its scars inflicted by the elements with pride and defiance. Uncut, non-time-lapsed versions of the two paintings featured in this video, accompanied by step-by-step -step guides to painting them, will be available in the extended bonus director's cut, along with hundreds of other similar projects, to all subscribers of my online tuition service, which starts at a mere £9 per month. Well, full details of how to subscribe to that can be found in the description below. I really enjoyed my visit to the Mull of Galloway. It's always a pleasure and I look forward to returning there again sometime in the not too distant future. I hope you enjoyed it too. I know that it's an area that has inspired many artists down the years. Hopefully, it might even have inspired you to have a bash at painting some rugged cliffs and restless seas yourself. Until next time, take care. <laughs>